Welcome to Kill Rob's quick engine tuning guide. Naturally aspirated, that is, so that less of your engines need to be binned. In this video, I'm going to show you three really quick naturally aspirated builds and how to set up those engines. Very different ones. We're starting with a bog standard inline four in 2012. Then we're going to an old school carburetted engine in 1950 and then to a um, super modern high end sports car engine. The 4.2 engine designer revamp seems like it is super complex and massively advanced. But it really isn't. It is actually probably a little easier to make good engines now than it was before. So, bog standard in line four. We're choosing all the all the default stuff. Two liter square engine. No need for any qualities here. We're going to choose balance shafts. Just leave everything the way it is. Even here, just leave it as is for now. We are going to choose VVT. Optimizations can be done later. I'm um, quite confident this engine will run, not because I've tried it before, but um, because in this new version of the engine designer, the big revamp, your engineers are taking care of all that nasty knocking and so on. Uh, I'm going for a standard mid-manifold here, and I am going to match it. Wait a sec. Premium. Let's use that. Um, I'm going to match it on the header side with a cast mid um, header. Going to use three-way catalytic converter, just super standard everything. And now, what you see here is the new way you are going to tune your engines. There are four graphs that are very important. It's the, first of all, the flow graph. You want these lines to be ballpark 100% at peak power. We have, of course, our power torque graph here which in this mode really just serves as a general hint at what is happening and how the shape of the curves is changing. And then we have our timing map, which you could see as an octane requirement map. So this is basically your octane usage. And then we have the brake specific fuel consumption map, which shows you the engine efficiency across all throttles and RPM. What I would be observing in this graph is that the manifold is sticking out just a little too much for being an NA engine, a naturally aspirated engine. So I think we need to fix this. This could be done by, well, we have made our choice for the design, but we can always make the manifold a little larger and that will move down the line. And what you can see happen up here in the power torque graph is that we're gaining a fair amount of high end torque. I think now we're looking quite happy for this one, for this super generic engine that we are creating, all just sitting at 100% right there. If you were to tune for economy, you'd move everything up a little bit to like 130%. If you were tuning for really high end sportiness, maybe just to like 90% there, but that also varies depending on what components you choose. All right, so now um, we have one major thing left to do here for this engine to be properly set up, and that is lots of unused octane here. This map is green and blue. We want it to be a little yellowish on top. That would mean that we have used all the octane and actually had to pull out some timing to accommodate for that. So what I'm going to do now to optimize the uh, timing map is add compression. And as you see here in this graph, we are also gaining some power while doing so, up to a point. If you go too far with compression, that will mean that you have to pull out too much timing and that actually hurts your power output and your efficiency up on top at full throttle. What you also can take a look at is how this big blob is moving down in throttle. That is great for economy. I think we are going to go as far as just seeing this slightly yellowish band there. 12.0 compression. Sounds good to me. You see how much extra power and or torque we got out of this. And this engine looks about done. So now our second engine is going to be an old one. We are going to make an inline six with a few carbs on it. Not quite that large, please. A 2.6 liter, 1950, let's make it a push rod, 
And we are going to go for the aluminium head because that is nice. That gives you a little bit of extra octane to work with. Not much choice here for crank and pistons and balancing mass. We are in need of the harmonic damper though because this long crank that we have in the inline six. We're going to make it a little bit of a smooth engine and um, that is all looking fancy enough. Going to go down with compression, just start low is my recommendation. You can always work from below and up it later on. This is supposed to be a bit of a lazy engine, so let's down the cam profile a little bit and just leave the springs and lifters where they are for now. Um, 6,200 is slightly optimistic. Let's drop it down to 5,000. Just continue on. And we choose the carburetor and let's go for the single carb. Now you've got to consider how many cylinders do I have and how far are they apart and how many carbs do I need to put on there. If you just put a single carb on it, and then you are going to have the, the problem of distributing the fuel to all the cylinders equally, which will never happen. If you have three on there, that is less of a problem. If we want it to be a lazy engine, then we just start with a standard low intake, longer intake runners, and using leaded 92 as our base fuel. A cast low exhaust or header to match our choice on the um, intake side, the manifold. And you don't have to match them, but um, you can, can widen the range of RPM that you want by using a different set here, of course. But uh, right now we do want to make it lazy and matching. So here we go, also reverse flow, and let's add another reverse flow. All right, let's take a look what we got here. The concept is working just like with the bog standard engine that we looked at before. First of all, we want to make sure that all of these flows are roughly in order. And we see one sticking out a lot. And that is the manifold. All right, got to open that one up a little bit again. So um, let's bring it down to um, roughly there. It's still a naturally aspirated engine, so that is that peak power we have right there. So they are, uh, we're running a little lower than 100%. That's fine. But you see how much difference that change made. Just a massive gap here because we unbottlenecked the engine. If this is supposed to be a lazy engine and we are already here, while we are here, we can uh, adjust the fuel map slider. Also, we don't want it to be all too responsive. So, um, and probably use less fuel. Let's lower that down a fair amount to 15. That kills slightly, at least, the throttle response, and it just provides some additional overall efficiency. Lena burn. Now, what do we need to do? This map looks like an ocean. Ocean maps are kind of interesting, but uh, not, not good for your engine. That means we have plenty of compression to put into this engine, and we are going to do so and because it is supposed to be slightly economic, we are going to up it slightly more than we otherwise would. 9.2. Still have gained lots of power, but also lots of efficiency, pushing this down. Now for some quick optimizations. Springs and lifters seem to be on the hard side. I don't think that we are seeing any kind of valve floating here yet. That means we have springs that are just a little bit too hard. We could save on some friction right there. So let's drop that until we see the drop up there. There it starts dropping. You see how it has lost a little bit there? Yes, that is exactly what we want to see. There. That means the rest of the engine now has actually gained a little bit of power. And that is it. A solid build. Let's move on. And now we're going to build a high-tech sports engine. How about adding a few cylinders to it too? A V12 and dual overhead cam 5, going to make some power. But it is a smaller engine, a high revving one. A 3.2 liter V12 with um, a rather over square setup. That should rev quite a bit. So what are we going to use? Um, I think it is time for some forged components. 
And of course, don't forget the harmonic damper. We're going to do some uh, fine tuning later on, but I think this is already looking uh, quite standard as is. Leave everything there, you can adjust cam profile and everything else later. First, always start off with a working engine. Direct injection, throttle per cylinder, and we're going for the high performance uh, intake right there, or manifold. Just leave everything there as is, and 98, I think, would just be suitable for this one. Um, and then we're going for tubular long here to fit the theme, and high flow, none, and straight through. Seems about right. So, first things first, what are you supposed to do? Remove all the bottlenecks and get your flow in order. One thing that we should make sure is that we actually have the rev range that we want to see, and I think this one should be capable of around 9,000. And now, back to the flow, because we see the exhaust is severely uh, bottlenecking the engine right there. Let's go for dual and up it by one. That is looking a lot better. We also see that the manifold is slightly on the large-ish side, as the flow is quite low through it. That means less resonances that you can use, and that's not necessarily something that we want. So let's shrink it down a little bit. But what you're going to get at the same time is that some of the resonances are going to move higher because of that. So we're moving up that curve a little and just narrowed it down. You are going to lose a little bit of power down here on the top, but um, that is something we're willing to sacrifice for overall better performance. The same goes for the header, it seems. So let's close that one down as well. And now you only see one line sticking up, and those are the valves. And then you wonder, but we don't have a valve size slider. And then I say, yes you do. It's baked into the cam profile. Because the cam profile slider does have, uh, or does modify, lift. And for a high revving engine, 40 cam is not a lot. And you see it here in the tooltip as well. The uh, estimated peak torque for this one will be at 5,100. Probably want to move that a little higher if we're going to rev out to 9,000. I would estimate something like a 70 cam profile would be quite appropriate. But what do we get here? We do get some valve float, and you see that in the warning up here. If you're running into valve float like this, because you have made the cam profile much larger and the springs and lifters are being taxed more, you do need to increase the spring stiffness as well. Maybe not that much because we do want to have that nice little power fall off right at the end so that we don't have the um, springs over specced. So first we made the engine work in the area that we wanted, in the rev range that we wanted. Then we corrected all the flows to the point where we were satisfied with them. And what is next? Next is this ocean. We need to fix it. How much compression can we run with this one? Probably because it's a high performance engine, you want it to be a little bit on the low side because there is something that is called peak torque timing. And peak torque timing, if you look into this map, you can see happens right there. And the switch over between timing needs to be retarded and unused octane. That line is peak torque timing. If you go beyond it, you still have the efficiency gain from compression and thus power gain, but you will also have to start to pull out timing. At some point, they are going to take out each other and you have no more benefit in terms of power, in terms of performance, to amplify up the compression. So let's see and that would be somewhere there. Just when you start to see that band, like one-ish one, one -ish percent, maybe a little bit more. And there you have it. That is our high-end sports car engine using no quality. And with that being done, I think we are done here too. This is the basic tuning tutorial all done with three example engines. Really simple to run through. As long as you keep a little bit of structure to your tuning efforts, you are going to have no troubles at all to produce something that is rather adequate. I hope you enjoyed and see you guys next time.